I think that streaming killed the double album. Listen, that's something that's prevalent in every fucking big artist that you know. Like it's always they always have a double album, not even just rap. When it's on streaming and you're looking at it, it's like, shoo, 27 songs. Jesus Christ, this is gonna take a minute to go through. It kinda dilutes it. Like it kinda make it not special in a way. What's up everyone? This is Tatum. I'm back with another episode of Fuck This Review. Where today Jesus Christ, no pun intended, but we're finally here. Uh, today, I'm reviewing Kanye West, Donda. This rollout and the, the anticipation for this album has been crazy, uh, even dating back to when it was first supposed to come out about a year ago. We finally got Donda. I didn't want to rush this review. I really wanted to sit with the album. Uh, for those looking like, well, it's only been this amount of time. Trust me, I said with the album, I listened to it, the album a lot, a lot. But 27 songs too. Yeah, it's Kanye West's 10th album. First thoughts, the elephant in the room. It's 10 songs too long. <laughs> it's flat out, it's just 10 songs too long. It's some real gems in here. The overall project, it's fucking amazing. To me, it's mixed really well. And I know he worked with a new mixer, uh, a new engineer, uh, eco erco it's something like that but i think he makes this album beautifully i think it sounds big it sounds like stadium i think the live shows helped and hurt it people seeing those live shows so many times to be truthfully honest we bootlegged the second live show i've been listening to that for a month now and you know you get used to the way songs sound and the the track listing of some albums just the sequencing of some songs and when you get the when you get this one i don't know it kind of it, it for me, and I know I did this to myself, but it could throw you off. But on the flip side of all that, I also think Kanye West is one of the few artists that's actually still being an artist, if that makes sense, on a huge level. Like, we we don't get this a lot. We don't get, like, artists just being, like, the artist at a true form of what an artist is supposed to be, abstract, uh, live performance. Like, it's we just don't get it. So that part, I just, like, commend Kanye for all the way around the live shows to the ever working uh, evolving album so i'm not going to take up too much of your time i'm going to go through some of the tracks on here i'll try to make it through 27 uh talk about some things i like talk about the things i didn't like and just give my overall take so let's get into it like i said 27 tracks to me for real for real the album is 23 tracks i'm never listening to those bonus tracks the baby killed his verse on jail but i'm never listening to those those four tracks probably ever again um so 23 tracks for me, including skits and interludes, I assume. Starting the album with the Donda Chance, Selena Johnson, that's dope. The Going to Jail as the first opening track, I think I think it was perfect. And it sounds so, it sounds so clear. Like, not, like it's from listening to the demos over and over for the past month, you get the muffled sound, you still hear quality, but it's so clear, that guitar. It just sounds epic. I think the song is... That song is just crazy. The whole, just the whole metaphor of guess who's going to jail tonight. The return of Jay-Z and Kanye. Jay-Z has a bit on a Kanye solo album in over 10 years now, which is fucking crazy when you think about it. But I remember a tweet Kanye put up, I believe last year, where he was saying like, uh, what did he say? I think it was like Drake and Nicki and myself need to uh, basically have our OGs be on the first record of all our albums from here on out, just out of a respect thing. And I guess that was that's what he did. It was still kind of funny here in jail so early in the sequence, but I think that's a great record. That's a great Kanye and Jay Z record. I, I think it was a perfect way to open the album. Now I'm thinking back at it because uh, it just starts off and then going to God breathed on this, which is that gives that gave me the eight of ways feel. You know how like uh, bad news or something or say you will. He would just let the beat play out. I think he did that on here. Those drums on there are just crazy. And for the people complaining about the drums on the record, it's drums on these records. 808 is still technically a drum. And I'm not one of those people that be like, oh, this song doesn't have drums. Ah, to hell with it. <laughs> like, that's just stupid. Okay, I'll just, I think, I'll just say this. Also, I think that streaming, I think that streaming killed the double album. I think the end of the first disc, dating myself, I think the end of the first disc is at Heaven and Hell with the Donna Interlude comes in. I think that's the second album, the second disc. So I think the streaming era fucked that up. It just kind of destroyed the double disc for the artist. And that's something that's prevalent in every 
fucking big artists that you know. Like it's always they always have a double album, not even just rap. When it's on streaming and you're looking at it, it's like, whew, 27 songs. Jesus Christ, this is gonna take a minute to go through. It kind of dilutes it, like it kind of make it not special in a way. So, and I think the second, the first half of the album. And don't mind me. This is gonna be vomit thoughts. Like it's so, it's 27 songs on here. I'm just gonna let my my Donda thoughts flow. I think the first half of the album is the album that he made in Atlanta. I think that was the one. That's the new album. We had everybody come in. I think he already had that second half where it starts at Donda. I think he already had that. I think that was the Donda that we were gonna get. That was the Donda that was the personal Kanye album about his mom. But then he had all these people come in and not only. Uh, show respect for his mom but also talk to God and these are some of the best verses you'll hear from these artists like I hear a lot of people saying that the features carry the album which is true but it's also you wouldn't get those features if Kanye West is not involved in this another thing I noticed and like I said I'm gonna be I'm, I'm just vomiting thoughts another thing I noticed is that or theory I think Kanye I think Kanye figured out like I I can't do this like I can't do this by myself not in, in like a negative way. I think he's just because I I don't think his mind is focused on music all the way. So in that case, I think hanging with Dr. Dre and learning that formula of how to just produce and I'm saying that he wasn't producing before he's Kanye West, but Dr. Dre has a thing of curating and he can bring all these talents in and he can give you an album like The Chronic or 2001 or Compton where it's just a bunch of collective thoughts and everybody's shining. He don't even have to be on a song. I think he picked that up from Dr. Dre from working on uh, Jesus King 2 and just being around that great mind. I think he picked that up and I think that's what he wanted to do with this album. Okay, so off the grid, Fabio Foreign. Fabio Foreign and Baby King, two standout verses for me on this album. Yeah, that Fabio Foreign verse is just crazy. He went off for about two minutes. Jay came in, went off for about two minutes. It was It's a perfect record. I don't see, and that's one of the ones that people, that's a standout record that people seem to enjoy the most. Hurricanes, after 48 years of waiting, <laughs> after 48 years of waiting for this song, we finally got it. I think it sounds beautiful. I think, I'm glad we had the time to wait because we wouldn't have got the weekend vocals. And those weekend vocals are just beautiful and i'm also hearing people saying that they don't they're not getting like for lack of better words clarity with kanye they can't see where his mind is he seems scatterbrained and i don't see that with this album i i think a lot of the reviews and a lot of hot takes quote unquote came in a, a day and people are just people will rush just to just to say something and no one and it kind of taints the music but it's kanye west so it comes with the territory i don't think we do this with any other artist the hurricane verse he talks about just the ups and downs of his life in the, the since 2018 maybe 16 with his wife with his mental basically here i go on a new trip here i go with a new chick genius going clueless made the best tracks but still went off the rails he's acknowledging his his fuck ups like the the accountability that people have been wanting from Kanye West for however many years now he's showing it in this album like you just just pay attention to it I know everybody got their beer goggles on with him because it's just he's just so polarizing that he eclipses the music sometimes but listen to what he's saying he's talking about his marriage with Kim and Hurricanes and how uh, always could seduce her but this time it was too much praise God that song that song is just ill praise God is to me one of the weirdest sounding records i ever heard <laughs> it it's i know it's trap i know it's like has this gospel undertones to it but it's weird like it's it's weird like it has this weird aura to it in a good way i don't mean weird in a bad way i mean weird in a very good way travis scott kanye baby king baby king went off great week for him to have that family ties record and this one that's that's the rollout jonah you could have kept that one i get why the record's on there with just for the uh, Chicago and you know it, I love that hook I love Ye on the third verse coming in as like the big homie can't get no money like that when you beefing and shit like that so I get it so I get why it's there I also think the sequencing of it is in a bad place it comes after comes after praise God it just seems weird that should have been on the second half for me okay okay cool record it's it's funny that boy wonder did that beat though that's a cool record. I love Kanye popping and shit because we haven't got Kanye doing that in a long time. You get that Yachty verse and Yachty, probably the best Yachty verse we ever heard. That shit knocks too. Junior Watanabe on my wrist. Eh, it's a record I could go without. I feel like Drake would have been great on that record as well. Drake would have been great on that record and remote. Believe What I Say is probably my favorite record on here. 
one of my favorite records on here. It gives me that old Kanye vibe. I've been waiting for this one as well since he put the snippet up, that Lauryn Hill sample. Uh, it just feels good. And it lets me know that I had a conversation with a friend and I was asking him and I asked myself too, does it, and I'll ask you guys too as Kanye fans, does it trouble you that we probably would never get the, the, the commercial Kanye again? Like that that dance Kanye, that easy on the ear Kanye, that that because to me, it's like a it's like a it's a it's a tussle sometimes because it's like damn, if he could just give me ten of these, like that'd be amazing. It like it seems like he knows what he can do. Like he said in the interview before, I could make perfect. I made beautiful dark twisted fantasy, but a part of me also just respects the artistry and just not want to just conform to what you think I'm supposed to do. But I'm gonna do something that's outrageous you know what i mean and that's one thing that we have to just compliment him for like and we've been waiting for this like yay and jesus king you know whatever those were we we downed those albums because they didn't have we could tell he wasn't putting his all into it this one it's you can't tell me like it's 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 hours spent on this record hours 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 spent on this record and it shows remote love that record Young Thug, like I say in every review this year, it's just been killing the features. I fucking love It's like one of those records that I hate to love because it's like, it's it's it's, it's too catchy and corny, but it's like, ah, damn, it's just do sound. It sounds so good, though. <laughs> it sounds so good. Moon, I consider that an interlude. It feels like, I always say, it feels like Kid Cudi was just snuck in Mercedes Benz studio and was like, did I hear somebody say Moon? Like, he, it, it seems too, I don't know, it seems too on for two on brand for cuddy but it's still a great record get okay, heaven and hell hands down one of some of the best production on the record that build up with the choir and that sample it just it's just nasty i thought dr dre would have something to do with that record because it sounds very dr dre-ish and cinematic that shit is crazy i don't care what nobody says heaven and hell is crazy 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 and that's the shit that we love about kanye it's just that he really did that like the you don't get that feeling from a lot of rap music anymore. Music in general, you just get like, okay, that was a nice hook. That was a nice verse. Uh, look at it. That beat's nice. But you don't really get nothing that, like, when is the last time you got chills from rap or music in general? And that first half, like I said, I think that's the Mercedes-Benz half. That side is, like, very dark. You can tell he was going through the shit, the nightmares of losing his mom. This is how I put the album together. He's going through the darkness and nightmares and losing his mom. Listen to his mom sample on, uh praise god like it, it's creepy it's eerie it's all that and then once he gets to this side it gets a little bit more lift up keep my spirit alive which i mean it's a great it's a cool record i love i love west side's verse and i love kanye's verse conway verse on there is you could tell that was like he was trying to find it sounded like he was trying to find his footing with talking about god jesus lord another one for the people who say that they don't understand it's this album's not personal and blah 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 Jesus Lord explains everything. He talks about, I'm, I've been losing all my deepest friends. You've been down so long, you don't even know what's upstairs. He talks about the alcohol addiction, drug addiction, uh, losing his close friends, just not being able to trust anyone. And it's probably one of the most personal Kanye verses we gonna have. Like, I, I never heard him sound that vulnerable, ever. Uh, even on like Pinocchio story, you hear it, but this one in a rap form, it's just like, pfft. And then Jay Electronica with that verse is crazy. I take it back. I might listen to the locks uh, uh, part two. And to have Larry Hoover Jr. on there, it was just a perfect, it's just perfect. It's so Chicago, you know what I mean? Though it may go on a little bit long, it's it's a novelty record. Like, we're not going to get those ever again. We don't get records like that ever again. Posse cuts like that, never happening again. So you got to appreciate it, especially when it's fucking on a, con when it's on a fucking Kanye West album. Like, you got to appreciate that. New again. I think the second half, the second disc is way better than the first disc. Look, listen to this. Spirit, keep my spirit alive. Keep my spirit alive. Jesus, Lord, new again. Television, you could keep that record. I really don't understand why that's on here. Lord, I need you, my favorite record on here, where he gets personal about the his relationship with Kim Kardashian. That hook on there is just crazy. Like, that's beautiful music. That's that's personal music to me. Um, that goes into pure souls and they come to life and no child left behind that's a home run to me like that's that ladder i think people are getting lost in it because i don't even think people would listen to this album first of all like i think people are nitpicking through it i don't think people are getting to the second half of the album i don't even think people listen to it to digest 27 songs they're not even putting a thought into it come to life i, I just can't go past that pure souls and pure souls and come to life pure souls 
that has to be a single. I need the video. Roddy Rich did his fucking thing. Kanye did his fucking thing on there. That song is just perfect. Am I the only one on the end of Pure Souls right before the truth? The only thing you get away with. Somebody comes in and says, this beat is so dope. Listen to it. Somebody says, like, this beat is so dope. Right before she starts singing, the truth the only thing you get away with. Remember, look that shit up. Come to life. I never heard a Kanye song like that. It sounds like some uh like some nineties pop shit with the with that piano behind it. It's just a beautiful record and he talks about, he's talking about bringing your wildest dreams to life. He also makes it personal. He talks about how people look at him, how people judge him, how how he, uh, even as a dad, I know how this feels, but like you get something for your kid and they just like, I don't want this. I just want some Nikes. Like you're taken back for a second, but then you realize this is not about me and what he says in the record. Beautiful music, stadium music. You could tell being in that, that, that Mercedes Benz stadium really shaped this album. Just the way it sounds, it sounds big. It sounds crazy like it just sounds production wise it just sounds beautiful the record ends at no child left behind for me um hopefully though we get the 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 deluxe i'm still waiting for that andre the thousand feature all right let me get into my best songs top three i'll go with believe what i say lord i need you off the grid yeah i have more that i like but those are my favorite three worst song television get that out of here best line moving to the hood was like signing up for the army because they've been killing niggas since niggas was watching barney I just thought that line was so dope. <laughs> Rating out of five fucks given, I'm going to give it a four. And this is early. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Let's wrap this shit up, though. Junior Watson, I be on my when it comes to Kanye West Donda album, I love it, bro. Like, I don't understand. I get it. No, this shouldn't be the shit that we all love. Let me say that. This shouldn't be the shit we all love. Art is subjective, right? And Kanye West is probably the most subjective artist <laughs> on the planet every Kanye album is literally split down the middle on who likes it and who don't I'm glad he's back just focused on music I think the music sounds great I think we get the personal we get some of the questions answered that we've been looking for about where his mentor has been at his uh love life with his wife uh, his kids his battles with God his the desire to get over his mom's death and I also think this is his last album I think a reason why it was so stuffed and so many songs and probably more songs to come is that I think this is Kanye West's last album. I mentioned it probably a year ago in a video that I put out saying that this would be his last album. And listening to it a year later, it's definitely his last album. I don't think we're going to get another Kanye West solo album ever. Uh, I think this is it. And I think that's why he closed it up with like a letter to his mom. The The album cover is black. It's nothing. It's no representation. I think it's just... I really do think the album is... A person coming to grips with the fact that they lost a parent and he's polarizing and he overshadows the music at this point but i don't see how people listen to this and just be like this it's all right it's trash like it's i, I don't know i when when i hear stuff like that i just feel lost sometimes like damn am i really like is my like standard for music bad and then i think then i see what they listen to and i'm like no i can't i can't trust these people opinion on music it's 10 records too long. I think if he gave us 17, it'll be a classic. 17 records, this would have been a classic. But uh, and I also think that, and I don't mean this in a bad way, or I don't, I'm not, I don't mean this in a way of like, it's better than this, but I think it's Kanye West's White Album. You know how the White Album for the Beatles is so many, it, it could be over stuff. It's, it has so many records of uh, just every member of the band, and it's my favorite Beatles record, but I think this was his... This is his Beatles record. So black covers, like the black album, <laughs> it's it's just a bunch of ideas, and I think it sounds beautifully together. I think when it's all said and done, when the smoke clears, it's a lot of great records. When you see critics like like bashing shit, not even just this, just remember that hundreds of classic records that were totally panned when they came out. So that's my mindset when I look at this. Uh, let me know what you think about the Kanye West Donda album. Let me know what's your favorite three records on here. As always, though, fuck this review. I'm Tatum. Peace.